Okay, well here we are with um, another part for etching and we're going to actually do the etching now. And uh, I'm set up here in the kitchen. I like to do it by the sink because you need water and stuff and so on. Look at all the dishes in there from cooking all my food. But we don't worry about that. I'll take care of that later. And uh, we want to get it cooking in the pot here so then we can go do some other things. It takes quite a while. Every Maybe half hour I'll come out and take a look at it. Solution's fresh, so it shouldn't take more than 45 minutes to etch it down to where I want for this particular etching. I don't need it to be too deep. I just want the cross hatches in the uh, in the stairs. So um, what I have is the part, and I'll come up as close as I can here. So you can see it. And then I have a holes drilled in the corners that I'm going to just put the wire in here like this. It's a piece of wire. And I'm going to suspend it inside the solution. And just hook it so I can get it out. You know, I'm only going to get lost in there. And I put holes on both sides because sometimes you want to change it from the end to end. So that's going to go in there. And that just about fits in there. So. It just about fits in there. So now I gotta put the solution up to that level. And I'm not gonna heat the solution because it's just not gonna do it. Anyway, this is the ferrochloride. Put that in. Now I'm gonna come up. Let me see how much I put in there. About a third of it. Alright, now I got the bubbler system set up. Let's see what happens. There she goes. She's bubbling. Now I have a a metal tray here, aluminum little thing I got in the dollar store. In case this thing goes over, it's going to go in here. At least it's not going to get all over the place. Okay, now that's going to I'll start off and see how that comes out. We're going, to, we're going to put this in here. Now I need a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, now that's going to bubble up. That's about half of it. That's going to bubble up, and then you're going to come back and check it. Everyone's like, because it'll start coming over the top. It has a little top one. I just put that on there like that. And that'll bubble all the way up to the top. And basically, that's it. Doesn't take much to do it. Uh, Got to be careful. Like anything else, I guess you're using a, a somewhat of an acid. I'm not worried about it. I'm not even using gloves, as you can see. So I'm going to go... Uh, Work on some other part. In fact, right now I'm working on a, on a uh, scale whistle for the 1361. Getting down near the end now. I want to get these steps made up. A few other things. Uh, I don't know if I'll make it by Sunday, but right now the engine's ready to run. And everything I'm putting on it right now is just detail. It doesn't make it run any different, but it looks good. So, um, we'll come back in a little while and check this out and see okay. what happens. About a half hour has passed now, and um, the new solution doesn't bubble, make as many aggravated, aggra agitating bubbles as the older solution. So it's not really bubbling up that much, but it's doing a great job. It doesn't take that long when it's fresh. So if I were to heat that, it would even take less time. So about a half an hour has passed, and uh, I've rotated it a couple times. Just put it in, flipped it over one way, flipped it over another way every few minutes, flip it back and forth this way so it gets an even amount because what happens is with that bubbling action, it erodes in the areas of the bubble where the bubbles are more than on the outside, so you have to move it around a little bit and you got to just see if your etching is coming out even. Now with that sloshing plate that I talked about, probably will come out more even looking, but you can't really tell that much. I took the lid off right at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it out and just right here by the sink, no no special deal, and just wash it off. Just rub it right off, let it go down, drain. Probably the environmental freaks out there probably get upset, but that looks pretty good. It's really hard to see. You'd have to see it in person, but I would say it's about 10, 15,000 steep. Maybe, maybe 10,000. I'll check and measure it, but um, 
On this particular etching, I don't want it that deep. If you see the original, if you see the original, you'd see that it really wasn't that deep. It was more like a, a scoring on the top. So I will post pictures of the original when they're all completed. But there's three in a row here, two, three, and then I'm going to mill it flat, and then I'm going to screw it down to a piece of brass, and then silver solder it to the brass so now it becomes part of the brass, and then machine it. Uh, all three steps together, cut them apart, finish them up, drill the holes and mount them on, on the engine. And then they'll, they'll be a pretty close prototype of the original. So, um, uh, what I have here is this little pole. Just unplug that and that's it. And it sits there. You can actually let that sit there if you want to use it, say, today. But then I have this plastic jug here. And you just mark it, use, etch it and then pour it inside here so don't mix it with the new stuff so you can continue to use it as it starts to get real muddy and ugly and you start to replenish it a little bit and um, works out pretty good um, like I said you don't really shouldn't do it in your wife's kitchen sink but don't matter to me because I'm the only guy here and uh, sink's old so um, next time when I get set up I'm going to have a regular setup for it um, buy a sink and Near, near a sink and have it all set up there because I want to do some plating too and I have done electro plating and you need a certain amount of water to wash things off and everything so I'm going to have that whole setup for electro plating and um, I did an electroless nickel plate on the K4 and they're brass rods but you can't tell the difference between brass and steel it looks if you were to see them in person you would think they were made from steel and that was my objective and that's what I, I was able to do so now we're going to go on to um, the machining of, of the uh, steps and silver soldering and machining of steps and so on until the finished product. So uh, we'll go on to the next step now.